Okay, in this demonstration, I'm going to use the rule of thirds composition, which is basically dividing my picture plane into thirds horizontally and vertically. I think you can sort of see those pencil marks. And this should help you um, organize the composition. Now, of course, typical me, I want to go vertical and this thing is kind of big. Okay, so I just went and took some old uh, jelly prints. Let me just organize this and I'll flip it around so you can see it. So Okay, so there's the top corner, okay? So if I put it in the middle, right, my eye's gonna get stuck there. So I'm gonna pull it over to the corner. If it was a smaller thing, I could put it on one of those intersections, smaller corner. This piece at the lower end, if I put something up here right on this line, it creates a sense of, you know, something in the distance, scale, right? Now that line's going to go away, but I'm just showing you. So this first part is kind of important. You know, find find your pieces, your compositional elements, and spend some time um, arranging them. instead of just randomly throwing them down. Those pieces with the white, is that paint or is that the paper you didn't? Um, I print made a print and I had like, um, little pieces of, um, oh, I can't even think straight, cardboard on there. And so it created like a mask and it left a white space. But I'm finding them kind of interesting. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here tonight, but maybe, you know, maybe I'll do some drawing or something on there. I don't know yet. So that's just the paper that was originally it, there. Yeah, this is the original paper. And then this is the printed ink around it. Okay, so now I'm gonna glue these things down with my Mod Podge. And if you could remute yourself, Louise, just in case your phone rings. <laughs> So this is that deli paper, and then I just scrape across so it adheres smoothly to my surface.
Okay, so I've got my basic compositional structure laid out. And now comes the part which can be intimidating. It's like, well, okay, I've got it, but how do I bring all of this together? Where do I go from here? So I'm liking my carbon paper process I've been doing. So I'm gonna show that plus maybe a little bit of charcoal pencil. And I have to flip it around, otherwise I can't, it's too confusing for me. So I'm gonna do that. I like these lines in here. It's like water. I wish I had more. I want it to continue over. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm just going to have to kind of freehand it. So I'm using this chopstick. And then maybe at the bottom, I'll go a little bit, um, I'm gonna use the back of the chopstick and go a little bit thicker, maybe. Not getting too fussy about it because I'm gonna paint over these things. So Louise, like these areas are an opportunity to bring some lines or texture in. I, I'm not quite ready to do that. Uh, this is right on this line. That could be a horizon line. Maybe I'll put that in. This texture in here is nice. I could continue that pattern somewhere. Maybe I'm... going to continue it here as part of the landscape. Okay, now if I want more control, I'm going to do charcoal pencil, but that it's going to bleed when when there's water on there. So, I'm going to repeat mimic this little pattern here. I like the little grid in here. So I like this, it's a little bit like um, hieroglyphics or something. And you get these really fine lines that then if I paint over with transparent paint, they're, they're still going to show through and give a little um, contrast to the bigger, bigger elements. Okay. So, let's see. I knew I wanted fabric in there. I have this piece of fabric and now I'm seeing that and that. And I think I'm just going to put that in there so that you can see what it's like when paint goes over fabric, just trying to decide where I want that. I like the threads. Okay, I'm just going to plop that down and we'll just see what I get. Okay. Okay, so this is this is what I have. 
Uh, it's King Tut's letters floating on the Nile. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now I gotta try and integrate some of this starting to use paint. And I'm gonna start light and then work my way up. And I'm probably gonna bring in, this looks orange, but I think I'll go Indian yellow and then maybe try and layer over blue to connect them. Oh, I don't have Indian yellow. I've got yellow ochre. Okay. Found my Indian yellow. I'm going to do the brayer so you can see uh, printing with the brayer, try and do different techniques. So I've rolled out some Indian yellow on here and I can get a really nice um, thin transparent layer of paint. You can see that there, okay. water it down and that's what makes it transparent no 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 so it it comes transparent and peggy explained this yesterday i feel so dense so she said uh on the tubes like here you can see these three black lines and when you paint over it it's because it's, it's a transparent paint versus like the yellow ochre not as transparent okay so I'll try and roll something on that's not as transparent so you can see in just a minute. Laura, do you remember what color your wash on that canvas is? It's an Indian yellow. Okay, so this is yellow ochre. It's still kind of transparent, but a little, it's a little denser, right? Than um the Indian yellow. Well, we, if you took the uh, dense paint and you put water in it, would it come out the same as the transparent? Uh, probably, you'd have to play with it. The only thing is it might be a little soupy, you know, on your brayer. Okay, so see how just that solid block of color there that I just plopped in, it's already pulling together more, right? Now I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna do the same thing with this transparent manganese blue up in the top. I think that was a manganese that I used there. I can get the paint tube open, my goodness. All right, so here I go. So it's like the jelly plate again. I'm, I'm bringing in, in the sense that I'm using the brayer, okay? I like this because it's a looser, non-fussy way of painting and integrating things. Okay. Haven't even used a brush yet. Okay. Um, all right, I'm gonna do some of the manganese down here to continue my river, I guess. And if I work quickly enough, I can scratch through 
to continue those lines. I don't know if you can see that right there. What I like about rolling it on with the brayer is you get this little, um, I don't know what you call that, shadowed edge. Okay. Now I'm gonna introduce this, not that you have to get it, but I love it. It's this silicone uh, spatula, it's called a spatcher. And I'm gonna put a strip of color right there. Does somebody have a question? And I'm gonna go, this is a transparent fluid acrylic. I'm gonna get some of this red in there. And this uh, silicone spatula thing, you get a really nice, even, smooth layer of paint, kind of like the brayer, but a little more control. They come in different sizes. Okay, so now when I go across that edge, it picks up the texture of that fabric, which I really like. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to brush. I want some of that red in there, but not as much. Okay, now I'm gonna try and show some impasto just for contrast down in here. Um, I'm going to mix some of this, I think it's a light phthalo blue with some of this manganese. So if I hold my brush, down low at a 45 degree angle and I've got a lot of paint on there. I just pull and drag and then that bigger, thicker glob of paint comes off. And I'm covering, I'm going over a little bit to integrate. And then my silicone spatula, if I wanted really thick paint, let's see if this works. I'll do it over here. Glob, real thick, okay, big thick glob. And then I can do things like scratching through. Okay, I'm gonna make the sky a little bit darker and then maybe show one or two more things and then be uh, complete.
going to put an indigo wash on there, this high flow acrylic. And I'm going back and forth in this funky pattern, to, kind of like a patchwork, since there is fabric there. OK. Could come back and get some of those details if I wanted. Oh, my brush isn't working. Okay, never mind. Okay, um, I wanted to show you zinc white. Let's see. So I'm not sure where to put it. I'll put it right here because I don't like that. So if I go on top, zinc white is very transparent. So I can still see all those marks, but it kind of knocks it back a little bit. So I'm knocking it back, but then I think I'm going to bring it back because I don't like that line. All right. There's more to do, obviously. Um, I don't know what goes in here. Hang on, wait a minute. I'm just going to dr dry brush. That means no water. Drag over here so you can see how it picks up that texture of the fabric, which is fun to play with. No, it's not working. So I could write something on here. I'm joking here, like the Shroud of Turin, right? <laughs> An ancient manuscript. And then I could, you know, drag over the writing would show up sort of through the paint. <laughs> 